Hello everybody, this is Pastor Green. We do another Bible study, 2 Kings chapter 12. If you'd like me to come speak at your church or if you have any questions, you can email me at g-o-d-s-o-h-m-a-n at gmail.com or you can just comment below. So we ended the last chapter. This is in all the people of the land rejoiced and the city was in quiet. And they slew a Aletha with a sword besides the king's house. There's a lesson to learn by this. If you get rid of wicked people in your life, you know, for instance, the government and stuff like that, it's going to bring you peace. Proverbs 22 says, Cast out the scorner, and contention shall go out, yea, strife and reproach shall cease. If you get something in your life that's a problem, and you get rid of it, you're going to have a lot more peace, you're going to have more, a lot more uh, happiness in your life. And all throughout the Bible, it talks about a scorner. And a school is just somebody that's just uh, difficult and not exactly a great person. Proverbs 22 says, Make no shit friendship with an angry man, or with a furious man thou shalt not go. At least thou learn his ways, and get a snare into thy soul. If, you are, if you're around people that are angry all the time, that's going to start making you angry. If you start being like that, then it's going to make other people around you not very happy. Proverbs 29 says, When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. You know, a lot of times uh, we have people in our life, maybe they're a manager, supervisor, teacher, somebody that just isn't exactly the nicest person. And you think to yourself, you know, if they just did things this way, things would be a little bit easier. Guys, comment below to see if you have, if, if, you know, mention, you, you have someone in your life that maybe just you know, uncontrollably was mean to people for no reason at all. I, when I was a manager at a company, I'd always basically try to do everything I possibly can to make them happy. If there was five things that need to be done, I'd tell the person, hey, listen, there's five things that need to be done. You go ahead and pick two, and I'll do three. And this did two things. First of all, they get to pick the jobs they want. Maybe they pick the two easiest jobs, or the jobs take the least amount of time. And I'm stuck with three jobs. So they got two and I got three. So I had to do more work than them. Number two, I really didn't then make the decisions. So they feel like they had some kind of a control. And number three, I didn't say it had to be done at this time or that time. They knew that by the end of the shift, it had to be done. So they could do it immediately. They could do it at the end of the shift. It gives more flexibility. And everybody loved working with me because of that. Psalms 26 says, I have not sat with a vain person. Neither will I go in with the members. I have hated the progression of evildoers, and I will not sit with the wicked. So uh, at the end of 2 Kings it says, Seven years old was Jehosha when he began to reign. If you remember correctly, somebody decided to get rid of the whole entire seed, get rid of everybody because they wanted to be in charge. And they hid Jehosha. Uh, they hid him away, and he was seven years old when he began to become the king. So if you look at this map here, you have Goash on one side of the, the uh, country, and you have uh, Joash on the other side of the country. So we're going to start 2 Kings chapter 12, verse 1. In the seventh year of Jehu, Je Joash began to reign, and forty year reigned him in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Zibiah of uh, Beersheba. And Joash did what was right in the sight of the Lord all his days, wherein Jehudah the priest instructed him. So basically what this is saying is a seven-year-old boy was taught properly by the person that taught him. And it says he did right in the sight of the Lord. You know, the Bible has a lot to say about getting counsel, both good and bad. It's important to have good counsel because if you have good counsel, you get taught correctly. And if you get taught correctly, you know how to do, your, do stuff right. You ever had a job where you have somebody training you and they say, this is what you're supposed to do, but this isn't how we actually do it. Well, that's not very good counsel. You're supposed to teach people how it's supposed to be done, and that way when something comes up in the future, you're doing it the correct way. Proverbs 24 says, For by wise counsel thou shalt make thy war, and in multitude of counselors there is safety. If you have a bunch of people around you that are wise, that are smart, that teach you the right things, you're going to be perfectly fine because when you go to them for questions, they're going to give you the right answer. Lesson to learn. Some people do well only as long as they have a godly friend or a leader. But once they're on their own, you know, I know a lot of people were raised in the church, and then when they went to college, they decided to go crazy. 
or somebody who's raised in the church and they decide that I don't want to believe it anymore and they go crazy. Well, when you have these people around you, it's easy to do what's right. But once you're out of their sight, it's very difficult. And that's why it's a good idea to teach them at a young age. I know some vehicles need uh, vehicles need somebody to guide them. If you don't guide your vehicle, there could be a problem. But the high places were not taken away. And the people still sacrificed and burnt incense in the high places. So this king, who was only seven, maybe he was uh, not mature enough, he said it did right, but he didn't get rid of those high places. So people still sacrificed burnt offerings to Baal. He obviously was not reading his Bible every day, as the Lord commanded. Or he would have done known this was wrong. He would have known having these Baal uh, temples everywhere was a bad thing. And Joash said to the priest, All the money of the dedicated things that is brought to the house of the Lord, even the money of everyone that passes the account, the money that every man is set at, and all the money that is cometh into the man's heart to bring to the house of the Lord, let the priest take it to them, every man of his acquaintance. Let them repair the breaches of the house, wherever any breach shall be found. So we have this great idea. Let's collect the money and use that money to repair the church, to repair the temple. Doesn't matter if they're people that come to, come to church all the time, they're visitors. We're going to take that money and we're going to fix up this church. But it was so that the three and twenty years of King Joash, the priest had not repaired the priests of the house. The King Joash called for Jediah, the priest, and the other priests. So, twenty-three years he ranked started at seven, and now he's twenty-three. They haven't done any repairs yet. And he said unto them, Why repair ye not the breaches of the house? Now I therefore have received no more money for your acceptance, but delivered to the breaches of the house. So he's saying, You guys are not doing what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to take this money, you're supposed to re repair the temples, and you haven't done it. So you're not going to get no more money until this stuff's done. The priests were not doing their job. Are you getting paid to do a job and not being honest? Like being paid for 40 hours but actually working 25? Comment below if you've ever done something like this before. I think we've all done it at some point in our life. Good job milking your entry for attention and favor. And the priest consented to receive no more money for the people, neither to repair the breaches of the house. But Jodadiah the priest took a chest and bore a hole in the lid of it and set it beside the altar on the right side of the come to the house of the Lord. And the priest that kept the door put there and all the money that was brought to the house of the Lord. So the guy put a little hole on top of his chest people would deposit the money in the hole and the priest would take all the money that they collected and put it in this chest and it was so when they saw that there was much money in the chest that the king's scribe and the high priest came up and they put it up in bags and they told the money that was found in the house of the Lord so these priests said we're not going to take any more money but we're not going to repair it either so they had this idea let's go ahead and collect some more money this time it's going to be locked up in a chest nobody can get to it and we're going to fix this place and they gave the money, being told, to the hands of them that did the work, that oversought the house of the Lord. And they laid out the carpenters and builders that brought up the house of the Lord. You know, Proverbs 20 says, Most men will proclaim everyone is his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find. Instead of giving it to the priest to do the work, they went and found the people that were good. If you're good at carpentry, you're good at masonry, making gold, whatever, they give it directly to them so the bearers would get done. This is saying, you know, Everybody's going to say that they're good, but a faithful man is hard to find. Back to Second Kings 12. And to uh, masons, he hovers of the stone to buy timber and hewed stone to repair the breaches of the house of the Lord. And for all that was laid out for the house to repair it. Howbeit that was not made for the house of the Lord, bowls of silver, snuffers, basins, trumpets, and any vessels of gold or vessels of silver, the money that was brought to the house of the Lord. But they gave that to the workmen, and repaired them in the house of the Lord. Moreover, they reckoned not with the men, and who their hands delivered the money to be stowed on workmen, but they dealt faithfully. So instead of telling the priest to do the job, they gave the money directly to the laborers. You're good at carpentry? Here's some money, go fix that area. You're good at stonework? Here's some money, go fix that area. You're good dealing with metal, like precious metals, like gold and silver? Here's some money, you go do this area. You know, Proverbs 20 says, Most men... Proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man who could find. Second Kings twelve sixteen. The trespassers' money and sin money was not brought to the house of the Lord. It was the priests. 
Then Hazel, king of Syria, went up and fought against Goliath, and took up, and Hazel set his face to go up to Jerusalem. And Joash, king of Judah, took the hallowed things that Joseph at Joram and has uh, the fathers of King Judah had declared, and his own hallow of things, which were the gold that was found in the treasures of the house of the Lord, and of the king's house. And he sent it to Hazel, king of Assyria, and he went away from Jerusalem. And the rest of the acts of Joash, and all that he did, and all that was written in the books of the chronicles of the kings of Judah, and all of the servants arose and made a conspiracy, and slew Joash in the house of Milo, which goeth down to Selah. So you can see this little short, short story here about, you know, what happened with this king, this King Joash, and it sounds all well and good, but like it says here, are not all the other things written in the book of the Chronicles? Well, let's hear the other side of the story. The second book of the book of Second Chronicles gives a second look at King Joash, and it adds some very important details. You know, this is a Paul Harvey. He wrote for the rest of the story, and more of the rest of the story, because there's always something else to learn about. You're welcome to Latin and Greek. Today's root word is chrono, and chrono means time. So there's a bunch of words that the word chrono has in it. And so if you look at the books of the Bible, you have these books here, Joshua through Esther, which deals with the history of the Jewish people. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is the history of Jesus, the time here on earth. Second Samuel, first second Samuel, first second Kings talks about the kings here in uh, Israel and Judah. But if you get more detailed about it, you have first first Samuel, first second Samuel, first second Kings which talk about the kings of Judah. Then you have the chronicles which gives you a little bit more in-depth story behind these different kings. So if we go to second chronicles 24, we learn more about Joash. It says Joash was 7 years old when he began to reign. And he reigned for 40 years in Jerusalem. His mother also was Jobath of Zibath of Beersheba. And Joash did what was right in the sight of the Lord all the days of Jehudadad the priest. And Jehudadad took him for two wives and begat sons and daughters. <clears throat> but it came to pass after this that Joash was minded to repair the house of the Lord. And he gathered together the priests and the Levites and said unto them, Go out to the cities of Judah and gather all of Israel money to repair the house of your God from year to year, and see that you have wasted the matter, how be it the Levites hasten it not. And the king called for Jedediah the priest, and said unto him, Why has thou not repaired re, why has that not recovered of the Elites to bring out of Judah out of Jerusalem for the collection, according to the commandments of Moses the servant of the Lord, and the congregation of Israel for the tabernacle of witnesses? For the sons of Elitha, the wicked woman, have broke up the house of God, and also dedicated things for the house of the Lord, they did not bespoke did they not bestow upon Balaam? And the king commanded them to make a chest and set it with the gate of the house of the Lord. And they made a proclamation throughout Judah and Jerusalem to bring the Lord the collection that <clears throat> the collection that Moses the servant of God laid upon Israel in the wilderness. And the princes of all the people rejoiced and brought an end and cast it in the chest until they made an end. Now it came to pass that at this time the chest was brought to the king's office by the hand of the Levites. And when they saw there was much money, the king's scribe and the head priest's office came and emptied the chest, and took it, and carried it to the place again. And they did this day by day, and gathered money in abundance. And the king and Jehoiada did, gave them such as the work of the service of the house of the Lord, and hired masons and carpenters to repair the house of the Lord. And also they wrought iron and brass towards men the, the house of the Lord. So the workmen wrought, and the work was perfected by them, and they set the house of God to a state, and strengthened it. And when they had finished it, they brought the rest of the money before the king of Jedido, whereas he made vessels to the house of the Lord, even vessels to minister and offer withal, and spoons and vessels of gold and silver. And they offered burnt offerings in the house of the Lord continually all the days of Je Jehodadad. But Jehodadad waxed old and was full of days when he died, 130 years old when he died. And they buried him in the city of David among the kings, because he had done good in Israel, both towards God and towards his house. Now after the death of Jodadiah, the king of the princes of Judah, they made oblations to the king, and the king hearkened unto them, and they left the house of the Lord, God of their fathers. So, you know, remember before it said that this guy was good, now it's saying that they left the house of the Lord. Very interesting. And they served grove and idols, and wrath came upon Judah and Jerusalem for their trespass. And he sent prophets to them to bring them against the Lord, and he testified against them, but they would not give ear. 
And the Spirit of God came upon Zechariah the son of Jedidah the priest, which stood above the people, and said unto them, Thus saith God, Why transgress ye the commandments of the Lord, that ye cannot prosper? Because they have forsaken the Lord, and I was also forsaken you. And they conspired against him, and stoned him with stones at the commandment of the king, and the courts of the house of the Lord. And Joash the king remembered not the kindness of which Jodadana his father had done to him, but he slew his son. And when he died, this he said, Lord had looked upon it and required it. So this guy took care of him his whole life, until he was seven years old. And he, 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 he basically paid him back by killing his son. That's not a good thing. He got so big in his head because he thought, oh, I'm the king. I can do what I want. And he started falling away from the house of God. And it came to pass at the end of the year that the host of Syria came up against him. And they came to Ju Judah and Jerusalem and destroyed all the princes of the people from among the people and sent all the spoils of them to the king of Damascus. For the armies of the Syrians came with a small company of men. And the Lord delivered a very great host to their hand because they had forsaken the Lord God of their fathers. So they executed judgments against Joash. And when they were departed from him, for they left them in great disease. His own servants conspired against him for the blood of the sons of Jodadiah, the priest, and slew him on his bed. And he died, and they buried him in the city of David. But they buried him not in the sepulchres of the kings. And these are the last that conspired against him. Zibad the son of Semeth, and Ammonites, and Josabad the son of Samaria and Moabites. Remember the Ammonites and Moabites? Now concerning his sons and the greatest for the burdens laid upon him, and they were praying of the house of God, behold, they have written in the story of the book of the kings, and Amasis the son reigned in his stead. So first Kings talks about how he's a great king, and how he put these these uh, money and, and and collected money to fix up the temple, and all that stuff is great. It's wonderful. But when you really look into it, he served God for most of his life, and then at the end he got kind of a big head and started doing bad things. And he even killed the son of the man who mentored him his whole life and kept him safe from dying. Sometimes there's more to the story. Only a fool judges before he hears all sides. Proverbs 18 says, He that answer the matter before it heareth it is a folly and shame unto him. When you hear something on the news, don't take it at face value. Look into it. When you hear somebody say something, look into it. Don't take it at face value. Everything that you hear, no matter what it is, hear what they say and understand it but then go do your own research do like the Bereans did they heard what the person said they went home and they researched it always make sure you get the whole story here's here's an example right here the detective entered the apartment and found Ted and Alice dead on the floor the cat was hissing on the back of the couch with his back arched high in the air and he immediately concluded correctly of course that Ted and Alice died of suffocation. And you're like, what are, you, what are you talking about? That doesn't make any sense. Well, they didn't tell you that Ted and Alice was fish. And the cat pulled him out of the fishbowl. So you have to know everything is going on. You just can't take it for what you hear. Second Kings 12. For Joshua, the son of Samath, and Zedadob, the son of Shomer, his servant, smote him, and he died. And they buried him with his fathers in the city of David. And Amiza, the son, reigned in his stead. So, you can see Joash here, and then you can see Ezra came in afterwards. Well, guys, that's the video. I appreciate you guys watching. If you have any questions, you can comment below. Make sure you subscribe, like, share, all those fun things. Uh, we're going to be doing another video here next week. Uh, on the bottom left, of the, the bottom right of the screen is going to be the Second Kings Bible Study. The top left is going to be the First Kings Bible Study, and then the bottom left is going to be a video of the YouTube things you're going to like. I appreciate you guys watching. I uh, hope I see you guys in the next video. Have yourself a great day.